Chapter 18. The Kinetic Theory of Gases The kinetic theory of gases uncovers ideal gases, main free paths, average road mean square, and the most probable speeds, molar specific heat, adiabatic expansion. You can find them in the timeline. Ideal gases. A new way to look at gases. A gas is made up of atoms and molecules, groups of atoms bound together. The pressure exerted by a gas must surely be related to the steady drumbeat of its molecules on the walls of its container. The ability of a gas to take on the volume of its container must surely be due to the freedom of motion of its molecules. And the temperature and internal energy of a gas must surely be related to the kinetic energy of its molecules. We call this molecular approach the kinetic theory of gases. This is the subject of this chapter. Ideal gases. Avogadro's number. The mole is one of the seven metric system base units and is defined as follows. One mole is the number of atoms in the 12 gram sample of carbon 12. Just how many atoms or molecules are there in a mole? The answer is determined experimentally. The number of Avogadro is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 per mole. This number is called Avogadro's number. Avogadro suggests that all gases contain the same number of molecules or atoms when they occupy the same volume under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. The number of moles n contained in a sample of any substance can be found from n over n a in which n is the number of molecules in the sample. The number of the molecules in the sample can also be found from the mass m of the sample. And either the molar mass m, the mass of one mole of that substance, or the mass m of one molecule, n equals it. Mass of sample divided by molar mass m. Molar mass means the mass of one more of that substance. Summarize n equal to the numbers of molecules in a sample divided by Avogadro's number. O equal to the mass of the sample divided by molar mass of this substance. Brownian motion provides direct evidence of the existence of atoms and molecules using nothing more complicated than an ordinary microscope. We'll fill this small chamber with smoke particles from a match, then watch the particles under a magnification of 100 times. Notice the random jiggling motion of the smoke particles caused by air molecules colliding with the much larger particles of smoke. We'll use these small spheres moving in a frame to simulate Brownian motion. The spheres represent molecules of a gas in random motion. When we add a larger disk to the frame to simulate a large smoke particle in the gas, the disk is jostled side to side, just as a smoke particle is jostled by the motion of the smaller molecules in a surrounding gas. Ideal gases. At low enough density, all gases tend to obey the relation PV equals nRT. This is ideal gas law where in which P is the absolute not gauge pressure. 
Gauge pressure we learned before is the absolute pressure minus the atmosphere pressure. Okay, and this is the absolute pressure. N is a number of more a gas present. The temperature T must be expressed in Kelvin, not in Celsius. And R, we call the gas constant, has the same value of, for all gases, namely 8.31 jar per mole per Kelvin. PV equals NRT. This is the ideal gas law. Provide the gas density is reasonably low. The above formula holds for all types of gas, or a mixture of different types, with n being the total number of the moles present. Although there's no such thing in nature as a truly ideal gas, all gases approach the ideal state at the low enough densities. That is, under the conditions in which their molecules are far enough apart. Thus, the ideal gas concept allows us to gain useful insights into the limiting behavior of real gases. Look at this picture, okay? A one molecule hit, change direction and speed, until next hit, change speed and then direction, another hit, Okay, uh, and so on. Okay. okay, what is the ideal gas? Ideal gas means lambda much larger than air, much larger than R. What is lambda? Uh, lambda is the mean distance between two collision, or average distance between two collision. This uh, longer and have shorter and the longer, so on. So this is average. Air is the distance between particles. Now this looks like in this picture, like around this one, is the, uh, the distance between particles. And R is the interaction range of molecules. Uh, usually, you touch together, you have interaction. The distance about uh, two R is about diameter of the uh, molecule or atoms. Uh, you satisfy this condition. This is called ideal gas. That means the density low enough. They obey the law PV equals NRT. If we introduce Boltzmann constant K, it's called a Boltzmann constant K. K defined by R of NA. R is gas constant, 8.31 for all gases. And this is Avogadro number, is constant. So we we'll put this number inside, uh, we get the K, about 1.3a times 10 to the minus 23 jar per kelvin. Now we look at this and R. This is R equal to KNA. Okay, so NR we can put this N is then over I've got a number, R is KN. And so we operate this one, NA cancel out. So NR equal to NK, okay, and we put this in our instrument, this one. So we get PV equal to NRT equal to KNT. In other words, PV equal to KNT. This red one is equivalent to the blue one. If we look at this idea as a different point of view. This is from the whole sample, this is from a single molecular and atoms point of view. This syringe is connected to a pressure gauge. We'll use this apparatus to demonstrate the relationship between pressure and volume for a gas such as air. The total volume of the air in the syringe and gauge can be read on the scale at the side. We'll start with a 20 cubic centimeter volume of air at normal atmospheric pressure about 14.7 pounds per square inch. When the volume is decreased to 10 cc's, the pressure increases to about 29 pounds per square inch. If the volume is instead increased to 40 cc's, the pressure drops to about 7 pounds per square inch.
We'll use this pressure gauge connected to a hollow copper sphere to demonstrate how the pressure of a gas varies with temperature. With the air in the sphere at room temperature, 21 degrees Celsius, the pressure is about 14.2 pounds per square inch. When we dip the sphere in ice water to reduce its temperature to zero degrees Celsius, the pressure decreases to 13 pounds per square inch. Dipping the sphere in boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius increases the pressure to 17.5 pounds per square inch. If we mark these three points on a graph of pressure versus temperature, they appear to lie in a line. Extrapolating that line backwards indicates that the pressure of the gas would reach zero at approximately minus 270 degrees centigrade. Work done by an idea gas at constant temperature. And remember, this is the condition, at constant temperature. We look at this PV diagram. Uh, we have a three line. They are isothermal line. With this, all these uh, PV satisfy the temperature is constant. This is 320K, 310K from C. And initial stage for I along this one of a curve to F, this process we call constant temperature. This process we call is isothermal process. Okay. The isothermal process you have feature. The work done by definition is the PDV integration from VI to V final. And at constant, P is always over the idea gas law, NRT over V, PV with NRT, DV integration, VI to V final. Now, the condition is constant temperature, T. So T and R are constant, we take out of the integration now. Integration. You get a dV over T at VI to V final. Now this integration is very easy, it's log of V. So we put the V final V and R, we get it. Well done by an ideal gas at constant temperature, W equal to NRT or log of VI V. Final V over V initial. Now, let's calculate the work done by an ideal gas. Uh, they're starting from the definition W equal to PdV. Uh, at constant volume, V does not change. So dV is zero, the W equal to zero. At constant pressure, this P is constant. We can take it out. This integration derivative, you get a delta V. So we get P V final over minus V initial, but the P delta V. And the work done by idea gas at constant temperature, which have just long, W equal to NRT log V final over V initial. Different process, a different number. Sample, a cylinder, contains 12 liter of oxygen at a 20 degree of Celsius and 15 atmosphere pressure. The temperature is raised to 35 degree of Celsius and the volume is reduced to 8.5 liters. What is the final pressure of gas in atmospheres? Assuming that the gas is ideal. This is very straightforward. We know initial volume, initial temperature, initial pressure. And final temperature, final volume, we want to find the final pressure. So we know PV over T equal to NR. So PI, VI, TI over TI equal to NR, NRT. And also P final, V final over T final equal to NR. This is the constant. We know everything in six number, one, two, three, four, five, we can find another one. Only thing we have to pay attention is the temperature. It should be in Kelvin. So we see Ti equal 20 plus 233 Kelvin. T final is 35 plus 233 Kelvin, which we see. 
Report this number, we get the P5 number very easily. It's about 22 atmosphere. Sample. One mole of oxygen, assume it to be an ideal gas. Expand at constant temperature, 310K. From the initial state VI 12 liter to final state V final 19 liter. How much work is done by the gas during the expansion? Uh, we know this is the area, is the number is the, uh, how much the work done. Uh, this is isothermal process. Okay, so we know work done, we have a valuable formula. Okay, this is everything is valuable. Uh, valuable. So very easy, we put the number inside, we get a number. Okay. Pressure. Temperature and the room mean square speed. Here is our first kinetic theory problem. Uh, we have a box with six uh, surface of wall, okay, sheet wall. This box in cube is a, in the shape of a cubical box. Inside we have n number of molecules. Let n moles of the unideal gas be confined in the cubical box of volume V, the length of air, V equal to air cubic. Okay. The walls of box are had a temperature T, so temperature is constant T. Okay. What is the connection between the pressure P exerted by the gas on the walls and the speed of the molecules? Now we analyze the pressure by definition is F over A. The, the force is only related to X. Uh, we take this uh, surface is parallel to Y, O, Z. Uh, so F, Y, F, Z are parallel to the first. You never hit this one. Okay. Only related to the FX of the uh, FX. What is FX? FX comes from where? It comes from the hitting. Uh, drum beat hitting. Of the molecule does what? Right. Look at the FX. All together, is have one, two, three, four, five until the total number. And I've got a number. There's a total number in this in this box, right? So we put this on the one, two, three, four together. That's the total force. Okay. The area is r square. Okay, now, now we study this. Where is Fx single angular? Where the force comes from? Hit. When it hit, it is a collision. We call it is an elastic collision. Compared to the mass of the wall, the mass of molecule is very small. So we know that before, the result is returned back with the same speed. This is what we learned previous chapter. Okay. So the the force acting on the wall by the number I molecule is the delta Px of delta T. Okay. When you hit, you have a momentum change uh, during that T. Okay. Now, what the delta P when you hit the infinity wall, we're gonna turn around with the same speed. So, suppose the speed is v, and up hit is also minus v. So delta p equal to, by definition, the two m v x. This is number i is x. This is number i v x. Okay. What are delta t? Very hard to treat the hitting time. Then we estimate it. this word from hit here, go hit there, come back, come back, back. Up. So every time interval is, it goes air, come back air to air over V. This one we estimate, okay, is delta T. After delta T, it hit, 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 okay. So, so it goes one air, two air, divided by velocity, uh, X. Ah, this is a, a very important uh, module, okay. Uh, delta P to two MVIX. Delta T equal to 2L or VXC. 
one deity, one deity. Okay. We put them inside, and we see v i x squared two cancel out of air. We put f i x inside. So this f i x the i can be one, two, three, four until this one n and a. And this is have you have air plus air squared air cubic. The air cubic is v. Uh, this m is constant. The mass of one molecule. I take it out. So we find get this answer. Now we do some thing to to explain this first. P. Okay. This is a v square. One x square. Two x v x square. F three square until n. Now, if we divide the total number, I put it here, all right? This becomes an average v squared. And here, we exchanged n and m. We get m and t l. n, this one, okay? This is a, we know this one, this, this v x squared, you have one, two, three, four, three. it divided by the total number, so this is the average, okay, average. And look at this one. This is I've got a number. This is a mass of one molecule. So this is it could uh, the one more molecule. Okay. Uh, so we rewrite this equation to n more like mass because this is number one more like have this number. Well, I've got a number. Each one have mass m. So the total is more like mass. This is a cubic l is the volume. And this is the Vx average, square average. This is the red one. Okay, this is Vx square. You have one, two, three, four, five, and divided by total number. So this is Vx square. And we, by definition, which this one is called the V root mean square square. Ah, and this one, Vx square. Is one over three v square average. I will prove it later. Okay, and then we put this one. You get in uh, three v or the v v square average equal to v root mean square square. Okay, and m equal to n is is the molar mass air cubic is the volume and we see we define v square mean square equal to three what do we do now let me take the square root on both sides both sides is squared root mean square so this velocity is root mean square and you take the square root you take out oh, so this v root mean square see the definition yeah remember that okay and this one v square equal to vx square plus vy square plus vz square and by symmetry you the average xyz are symmetry okay so each one is equal this must be equal so this three v root mean square equal to three vx square or to three vy squares average equal to uh, 3vz square average. So v x square of equal to v room square over 3. Over, over three. Okay, so that's the p, that's the answer. That's the answer. Then we find v room square. v room square by definition. Uh, you take the square root on both sides, on, on the left side, you get v root mean square. Here you see root mean square. Okay. For ideal gas, we know PV could NRT. Also we have our calculated result. Uh, let me see. Let me compile these two. PV equal to NRT. We put this one here. Then we get V root mean square equal to three RT over M. Uh, this is how we do that. And from this we learn V 
V root mean square is nothing to do with P pressure and V volume and is only related to temperature T and molar mass. Uh, all the gases have the same this formula. Uh, different mass have different molar mass. Okay. The root mean square speed, V root mean square of the molecule of gas is closer relative relate to the speed of sound in that gas. Uh, sound speed related to this one. Okay. We'll use this molecular motion demonstrator to simulate the increase in pressure of a sample of gas when its volume is decreased. The motion of the spheres in the frame corresponds to the motion of the gas molecules. The pressure on the side of the frame caused by spheres striking the frame simulates the pressure of a gas on the walls of its container. When we decrease the volume inside the frame, the spheres strike the frame more frequently and at higher speeds, simulating the increase of pressure in a gas when the volume is reduced. We'll use this glass tube containing glass chips floating in a small amount of mercury to demonstrate kinetic theory. When the mercury is heated over a gas flame, the mercury boils rapidly. The energetic mercury vapor pushes some of the glass chips up into the air where they dance vigorously. We'll use this molecular motion simulator to show the free expansion of a gas into a vacuum. At first, the balls are moving in only half the frame. When we remove the center barrier, the balls expand freely to the other half of the frame. Transmission of kinetic energy. For a single molecule of an ideal gas, we know K equal to half and V squared. But the molecules are hit with other people and you change the speed. Okay? So we need what you need, the average. And this V square average, we know what is it? Okay. Uh, so we just calculate. Okay. Is e, by definition it's V rooms root mean square square. Okay. And this number we have already kept equal to 3RT over M. So we combine this one, M and M. Okay. This is molar mass. This is a mass of single molar. So this should be the number of the molecular. Okay. Ah, this is, this is, a, I've got a number because this is a, molar mass, the divine mass equal to number, okay? And we know R of N is defined by Boltzmann constant. So this equal to two-thirds KT, uh, KT. And we rewrite it as three times half KT. Oh, you should look at it. This is very interesting, you see? At a given temperature, T, all ideal gas molecules, no matter what their mass have the same average translation of kinetic energy, K bar equal to three, half KT. Why we take three out? Because for a single molecule, it has three freedom, moving along X, along Y, along Z. Each freedom distribute half KT energy, the three. And later we'll find you have a more freedom, you have a more kinetic energy. When we measure the temperature of a gas, we also measure the average traditional kinetic energy of its molecules. This applies to any objects, uh, any gas. So if you have a, a smaller M, then velocity must be do because the same, uh, the M is smaller, V must be bigger. Mean free path.
average speed, root mean square speed, and most probable speed. The distribution of molecular speeds, Maxwell speed distribution law. This is Maxwell speed distribution law. PV equal to four pi m, the molar mass over two pi rt to the three over two v square e minus m v square two pi two rt, more or less like this one. Okay. This is called the product PV times dV. Remember, you have a dV, which is a dimensionless quantity, is the fraction of molecule whose speed lies in the range V to V plus dV. It's physics meaning. Uh, PV dV uh, is the fraction of molecule whose speed lies in the range V to V plus dV. Uh, this is a probability. Okay, so this is probability for V and plus dV. And we do the sigma or the integration from V initial V1 to V2. What this mean? This mean is the fraction of molecules with the speed in the interval of V1 to V2. Or if we take V1 equal to zero, V2 is infinity. This is you cover all kind of speeds, velocities, vertical. So it should be one. 100%, okay, 100%, right? Maxwell, great physicist, okay? We will, we will learn something, theory from him, okay? Now, let's go back to this one. We plot the curve, and this is a P, and this is a speed, okay, the speed. Ah. And we find this one is the area, this area called a PDV, dv in here is a dv this the the area map is the percentage fraction of the molecule within this range and we know that all the area under this curve is one because the percentage is 100 percent is one okay and we will have four different three speeds this is called most probable speed vp because it's a probability is the highest and this one is the average velocity, all the velocity, average velocity, all the um, element. And this is called road mean square, as we mentioned before. Okay. And the total increasing is 100%, you could have won. Uh, you take it from one velocity to one, zero to infinity, zero to infinity. Whatever curve, you always have some molecule with very high speed okay ah. now we see this is also a temp function of t all right ah. a different t we have this different distribution of speed with high t so 80 degree 80k 300k the high t you have more molecule with high speed this is high speed okay average speed Road mean square speed and most probable speed. We from we calculate from this one. We know the percentage. Okay, so the every percentage is the v multiplied by its probability. This is the percentage uh, probability and to the sigma. Okay, the sigma. And we do put the v inside. We do the integration. This integration is not very hard. Uh, it's not a big one. Uh, not a very big one. So. It's very easy when to do it. Okay, we can find it's square root a r t over pi m. This is called average speed. Root mean square speed by definition, okay, is is this average? Okay, we do the average v square. We put the v square probability sigma the integration from zero to infinity, and this one we get equal to three r t over m, and the road mean square air speed is square root ah, is square root this one so square root three r t over m. Finally, have multiple probably speed. What do we do? We we take d p d v equal to zero. We can find the maximum minimum. In this case, we find the v uh, 
is equal to square root of two r t over m. Uh, this is three. You remember the answer. You don't have to do the calculation. Okay. Now we look at this one. Uh, look at ring. The speed distribution of water molecule in say a pond at the summertime temperature can be represented by curves similar to this above curve. Most molecules do not have enough energy to escape from the water surface. However, some small numbers, very fast molecules with speed far out in the tail, okay, here, they can do so. They can escape from the surface of energy. Okay. This is a water molecule that evaporates, make the clouds and the rain a possibility. As the first water molecules leave the surface, okay, carrying energy with it, the temperature of the remaining water is maintained by the heat transfer from the surrounding. Surrounding is to have. At the same temperature, you have always, so the collision, you have always very few molecules with high speed, with high speed. So it will continue to evaporate too. Sunshine. Let this distributed curve above figure now refer to a protons in the core of the sun. That's the proton in the core sun. The sun's energy is supplied by a nuclear fusion process that starts with the merging of two protons. But the protons repel each other because they are electric charges. And the protons at average speed do not have enough kinetic energy to overcome the repulsion and get so close enough to merge so get the nuclear fusion. But you always have very fast proton with speed in the tail of the distribution curve can do so. So the sun in sun you have always few very fast called proton. They can close together and call the nuclear fusion and Give it the heat. Sample. A container is filled with oxygen gas methane at room temperature 300 K. What fraction of the molecule has speed in the inter internal 550 99 to 6.0 meter per second? The molar mass M of oxygen is 0 0.0320 kilogram per mole. We use this one. We do it. Okay. We do this one. Okay. We want to find this V. Okay. Per percentage. What fraction of more? You want to find the percentage. What we do? We do is let me set this the red one m over 2 pi rt to the 3 over 2 power a. And this m v square over 2 rt over b. Now, dv in this case is 2 meter per second. It's given. Okay, it's given. And v is around 600 because 599 to 6.0 of the v is around, around 60. So we put this number into the Maxwell equation. We need a and b. We put a, a is the M is molar for oxygen 0.03 kilogram. This R is 3.8.31. T is 300. FC2, you get A. Also, you need to get B. B is minus MV squared over C. We put the V is around 600. Okay. T is 300. M is 0.32. We get a B. So, we put this one PVDV equals 4 pi A V squared e to the minus the dv. Uh, then we put everything now is about 2.62 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, that's about uh, 0.0262%. Very few, very few. Okay. Sample. The molar mass m of oxygen is 0.0320 kilogram per mole. Question A. 
what is the average speed V average oxygen gas molecule at T 300 K uh, this is a very simple straightforward we put the, this one you got it square root from 0 to infinity okay this is average okay this is average speed uh, this is equal to a R A T. we have calculates we put them inside we have M we have a T very simple okay that is three four about 445 meters per second now, this is the speed of oxygen at the room temperature okay question B what is the room road mean square speed V road mean s at 300 K now we see we have a formula too this is a square average and a square root okay uh, so this one equal to square root 3rt of m we put on the main side we'll get this one this one is bigger than average right and we have finally we have probable speed okay we put on the main side okay uh, this is 2rt over t uh, we get it's about 393 it's smaller than this one molar specific heat the molar specific heat of an ideal gas internal energy E internal let's first assume that our ideal gas is a monoatomic gas which has individual atom rather than molecules such as helium neon or argon next recall that Internal energy is the energy associated with random motion of atoms and molecules. So let us assume that the internal energy E internal of our ideal gas is simply the sum of the translational kinetic energy of the its atoms. Individual atoms do not have rotational kinetic energy and no potential energy involved because the distance between them is pretty far away. The average translational kinetic energy of a single atom depends only on the gas temperature T and is K average equals 3 times half KT equals 3 over 2 KT. A sample of n moles of such a gas contains and I've got to remember atoms. The internal energy E in turn of this sample is then E internal energy equal to this number N N A times A average. That is N and A times two third K X. And we know that one <clears throat> N A K is constant R R. So this E internal equal to 3 over 2 n r t so e internal for monoatomic gas equal to 3 over 2 n r t this is only for mm, monoatomic the internal energy of e m of an ideal gas is function of gas temperature only it does not depend on any other variables like voltage, pressure. Molar specific heat at constant volume. This is a specific heat at constant volume. Ah, we look at this gas, okay, ideal gas. We look at this, the piston by ping. So the gas cannot expand it or be compressed. Uh, here we have a heat reservoir, you have a heat exchange. So we look at this one, the V is constant, this is P, this v. v is constant uh, from initial state to the final state. Okay, P changes, T changes. Okay, we want to find the molar specific heat at constant volume. We know this one, at constant volume, the work done by the gas is zero because dv is zero and the q the newton first law it q 
Q equals delta E plus W. W equals zero, zero, so Q heat absorbed equal to delta E internal. Okay? And by definition, at constant volume, the QV equals C delta T for the N. Uh, this is definition. Okay. Then we, we got this Q equal, so we get delta E equal to N C V T. And C V equal to one over N delta E internal or delta T. Uh, this is molar specific heat at constant volume. And we know that the E internal equal to 3 over 2 nRT for monoatomic gas. Okay. And then we put this one delta, we get a delta E equal to 3 over 2 nR delta T. And this is the C, C equal to 3 over 2 R. This CV is for monatomic gas. We now generalize about the equation for the internal energy of any ideal gas by substitute CV for 3R over 2. Then we get E internal equal to NCVT. This is generalized for all kinds of stuff, okay. any ideal gas. This equation applies not only to an idea monoatomic gas, but also diatomic and polyatomic ideal gas, provided the appropriate value of CV is used. CV is changed. CV for diatomic is one value. For polyatomic is another value. It's from, uh, different from two third R. We see that the internal energy depends on the temperature of the gas, but not on its pressure or density. So we get a delta E equal to NCV delta T from here. It's always true and to any idea gas. By thermal, the first thermal law, delta E equal to Q minus W. Delta E internal equal to NCV delta T is an ideal gas any process. Okay, we look at this one. Initially, the, the state is R here, and it can go constant volume okay, this way to this final state. It could it go to the constant pressure, go to final state. Also, it can go to so adiabatic process. All these processes. The delta T is the same. Delta T is the same. The kinetic energy is the same. Okay. A change in internal energy, E internal, of a confined ideal gas depends on the change in the gas temperature only. It does not depend on what types of process produces the change in the temperature. Whatever constant volume, constant pressure, di diabetic process they get the same answer, delta E. And we've got a CV equal to 1 over N, delta E internal over delta T. This table shows that one. Monoatomic, uh, its CV is 3R over 2. Okay? This is diatomic, and CV is 5R over 2. And this polyatomic, CV 3R, look at this. Helium, argon, they are almost the same. Diatomic, nitrogen, oxygen, they are almost the same. Uh, polyatomic, you know, like uh, ammonia and, and uh, diet, uh, a couple of diode is almost the same. Molar specific heat at constant pressure. This is constant pressure, okay? Now we see this one. We put the we put the uh, shut constant. So whatever it, it extends, the, the pressure is the same, the constant pressure. And here you can have a heat exchange with a heat reservoir. What I do, you see this initial state, the constant pressure 
this is the pressure from initial to the final state okay the final state here you have a v plus delta v t plus delta t and so on now in this process we see for the first law of thermodynamics q you could delta e internal plus w okay and this one we have learned what i have a process is n c v delta t and the work at constant pressure we can p take it out is p delta v and p delta v equal to n r delta t because p v equal to n r t and by definition by definition this one q is delta e is n c v delta t w is n r delta t and by definition of heat capacity QP equal to CP delta T plus the mass, right? And we compare these two, we get CP equal to CV plus R. This relationship is very important. You have, it not depends on anything else, just a relationship. CV and CP. CP is always larger than CV. Sample. A bubble of 5.0 or more of helium is submerged at a certain depth in liquid water. When the water, and thus the helium, undergoes a temperature increase delta T of 20.0 degrees Celsius at constant pressure, the process is at constant pressure. As a result, the bubble expands. The helium is now modern atomic and idea. Question A. How much energy is added as heat to the helium during increase and expansion? We want to find the Q. Okay. Ah, this is a constant pressure force. So by definition, Q could N C P delta T. Ah, delta T. We know delta T, 20.0 degree. Okay. Ah, we know C P because it's monatomic. Cp equal to Cv plus R. Cv is two-thirds R, so plus is 5R over 2. And N is 5.0 or more. we we'll put this number, get to this is, okay. N is Cp delta T. But I'm saying N is 5.00. To have 5, R uh, 8.31, delta T 20. We get a Q. We take the three significant figures, so we get a 208 gel. Question B. What is the change delta E internal in the internal energy of the helium during the temperature increases? This is a, whatever is delta E is by formula is always NCV delta T. Okay, the CV is 3 over 2 R. Okay, this is a 5, this is a 20, so I put it inside, we get delta E. Alright, yeah. Take 3, did you, uh, significant data, uh, figures, get it. You get them, uh, 3, 2, 1, 2, 5, oh. okay. How much work W is done by the helium as it expands against the pressure of the surrounding water during the temperature increase? By the first law of thermodynamics, we know W equal to Q minus delta E. That we just calculated the Q and delta E. So put so we put a number inside, uh, we get the work done by the gas. Sample. A cabin of volume V is filled with air, which we consider to be an ideal diatomic gas, because oxygen and nitrogen. At an initial low temperature T I T one. After you light a wood stove, the air temperature increases to T two. Question: What is the resulting change delta E internal in the internal energy of the air in the cabin? Not uh, in the cabin. Okay. Now we know P V zero equals N R T one is original formula. Then we know P is constant 
when he's expansion, he's always constant at air pressure, right? And the T final is T1 plus delta T. Okay, so we put this one, P is constant, P delta V equal to N R delta T. Okay, delta T. And we combine this one, we find E initial equal to N C V T I by definition. E final equal to N C V T final. Here we have to notice that when you the temperature increase, the gas expands, so some of the gas get out of this cavity. Only a limit part of it retain in the cavity. So the energy internal energy uh, gas in the cavity uh, is a little bit different from total. Uh, is total internal energy multiply the percentage? The percentage is V0, the Kelvin value. Uh, this is, uh, it expanded. V0 plus V delta V is V final, okay? So, we look at this one. What the internal energy change? is E F prime minus E F. And this one looks at V0. V0 equal to N R T I over P. So this N R T T i over p. This is uh, n r delta t over p. So this one could n r can over p cancel out. Okay, we get e final uh, in the cabin is n c v f final. This is a t over t plus delta t. And t plus delta t equal to t final. This t final cancel out this t final. So e f prime equal to NCVTI equal to E initial. So that means the internal energy change in the cabin is zero. Degrees of freedom and the molar specific heat. The equipartition of energy. We know that Every kind of a molecule has a certain number f of degrees of freedom, which are independent of ways in which the molecule can store energy. Each such degree of freedom has associated with it on average an energy half kT per molecule or half RT per mole. So E internal equal to 3 over 2 nRT for monoatomic gas because monoatomic gas has three freedom. Okay? Ah. And we extend this one, which is the internal energy for the gas, any gas, equal to 2 F nRT. This is, we replace F, uh, uh, 3 with F. Okay? F is the freedom of the gas. And the CV equal to 1 over n, delta t over t. So we must do this one, we find c equal to half f r. The r is 8.31, so about 4.165 f. This is energy. Now let's look at the degree of freedom. One monoatomic gas, it can have only three freedom. Translation along x, along y, along z. So three. Okay. We see diatomic atom. We have two. So each one has three dimension, three degree freedom. So two of them three. But they have seen connected. They have a confinement one. So minus one is five. So it has freedom five. And we look at it in other ways. We can look at this whole stuff. It has, it can have three translational freedom that go with the center of mass x, y, z. And it can have two rotation around this axis, along this axis, but not along this direction. Okay, because around this rotation it doesn't have any change. So the freedom is three translational, two rotation. Look at this ammonia. <clears throat> it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 
bounce. Okay, how many? One, two, three, four, five. So five atoms. We have three times three times five, but they have ten bond. Ten bond. Only nine is really bond. Another one is is nothing. So three point five minus nine get six. We look at it in other ways. The whole the molecule can rotate, can translate. They have three translational freedom and three rotational freedom. Now this is the degree of freedom. Okay, monoatomic. You have three translational. So CV equal to F is three, three R over two. CP is three R over two plus R five R over two. Diatomic like oxygen, it has three translational freedom, two rotational freedom, five. So CV is five R over two. CP is five R over two plus R seven R over two. Polyatomic, like CH four, it has three translational freedom, three rotational freedom, six F equals six. So CV equals six over two three R. CP is three R plus R four R. We'll use these spheres moving in a frame to simulate the equipartition of energy among gas molecules of different mass. These spheres all weigh the same and travel at a low average speed. When we add a set of lighter spheres to the frame, they travel at a higher average speed. The average kinetic energy in the motion of the lighter spheres is approximately equal to the average energy in the heavier spheres. Again, a quantum theory. We took a look at the energy of this gas. It can be translated on CV to, to third. Or you have a rotation, you get two or five. Or you have oscillation to your seven. They are step the quantize. The energy is quantized. This is a hint, okay, for quant quantum mechanics energy. Adiabatic expansion. The adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas is like this one. This is all isolated, thermal isolated. And it can move the piston up and down to the work. In the plot, we see this initial state. It go goes to final state. Okay, in this way, not constant volume, not constant pressure, not constant temperature. Okay, it go this way. We see how happened. Okay, we see for adiabatic expansion of ideal gas. It satisfies PV gamma equals constant. Okay, uh, that means PI P initial V initial gamma to the gamma equal to P final V final to the gamma. Uh, also, we have PV equal to nRT. We can get T V gamma minus one is constant. That is PI. T i v i gamma minus one equal to p final v final gamma minus one, where gamma is a constant, is c p over c v, c p equal to c v plus r, right? So this is what the kind of one plus r over c v. Uh, this is a, once we know gamma, we know what kind of a case it is, monatomic, diatomic, or polyatomic. Once we know what kind of an ideal gas it is, monatomic, diatomic, polyatomic, we can know the gamma. We prove it. We prove PV gamma is constant. Let's see. Ah, this is diadiabatic expansion. Q equal to zero. We know the internal energy E equal to. Q minus W. This is the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, and this is delta E equal n C V delta T. Okay, and this n C delta T equal to P delta V because Q equal to zero. 
and so W equal to P delta V A T. And we know PV equal to NRT, so we get P, we do the derivative on both sides. So PDV plus VDB equal to NRDT. Uh, these DT are the same thing. Uh, so we, from here we know DT equal to minus PDV over NCV. We put the DT inside. We get the PDV plus VDP equal to NR DT is minus PDV over NCV. Okay? Yeah. And this one N cancel out. Okay? So become R minus R C V P D V. Okay? Yeah. So we have P D V plus V D P equal to minus R P D V C V. PDV, PDV, okay? We move. And this R, we can just in CP minus CV. as a relationship because CP equal to CV plus R. This is PDV over CV. And with this CV, CV becomes one. This is CP over CV. So become CP over CV, PDV plus PDV. And then we see this one, the equation two side, PDV, PDV, cancel out. This is what we call the gamma. So VDP, this is the gamma PDV. This cancel out. So VDP equal to minus gamma PDV. Right? And we divide that by PV. Uh, uh, we get DP over P plus DV over V. Gamma DV equal to zero. And then we do the integration on both sides. dp over p integrate is log of p. Gamma dv over v integration is log of v. So we get log of p equal to gamma log of v. And we put the gamma in, on inside, we get the log of p plus log of v to the gamma equal constant. And log of p plus log of v equal to log of p v gamma equal constant. So PV gamma is constant. We have proved it. And sample. In above sample, one mole of the oxygen assumed to be an ideal gas expands isothermally along the same temperature at 310 Kelvin from an initial volume 12 liter to final volume 18, 19 volume. Question A, what would be the final temperature if the gas had expanded adiabatically to its same final volume? So that this process is, is adiabatic, okay? Oxygen O2 is diatomic and has, has a rotation but not oscillation. That means uh, it's a CV. Is Phi R over 2. And now we have at the initial state, you have PV over T equal in R. At the final state, it has PFVF or Phi R equal to NR. So PIVI over TI equal to P final, V final over T final. Okay. This is ideal guess. Also, this is adiabatic. Adiabatic, we have. P I V I gamma equal to P final V final gamma. This is adiabatic expansion. Okay. Combine these two. Combine these two. Divide it. We divide this one. What is P V cancel out? We have T. We get T V T I V I gamma minus one equal to T final V gamma minus one. Why we want to do this one? Because it's given. It's given. T1 is given. So T final is us. So T final equal to T1 V over V final gamma minus 1. Uh, we put a number inside, we get a T final. About 258 Kelvin. The temperature gets lower. Internal energy has been reduced due to the works of expansion.
okay, because delta t is smaller than one. Question B, what would be the final temperature and pressure if instead the gas had expanded freely to the new volume from an initial pressure of 2.0 pas Pascal? We know this is called the free expansion. Free expansion means the temperature does not change. It doesn't have time to change the heat. Okay? So T final if the T initial is a free expansion. Okay? You want to find the volume, okay, the new volume, and we know that's one. P V equals constant because T is constant. So we put this number inside, we get the number 1.3 gallons. Finally, we look at this. Four special processes. Okay, there's constant pressure. Ah, constant pressure. We have first law of thermodynamics delta E internal equal to Q minus W. Ah, we have the definition delta E instant internal equal to NCV delta T. Okay, so if P is constant, we get Q is NCP delta T, W equal to P delta V. If temperature is constant, then we get Q equal to W equal to NRT over log of V final VT because the delta E equal to zero, delta equal to zero, Q equal to W, and W equal to NRT log of V final of VT. If it is constant value, then we know W equal to zero, delta E you could do delta E. Delta E eternal equal to NCV delta T. Okay? Yeah. Finally, is adiabatics. Adiabatic, we have PV to the gamma is constant. Okay? Adiabatic, we have Q equal to zero. No T that change. And so W equal to minus delta E. Next lecture, chapter 19. Entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. Welcome you make a comment and give suggestions so that this program can be more helpful. Acknowledgement. This video clip is a part of my lectures on college physics during 1990 to 2021, based on the adapted textbook, Principles of Physics by Holiday, Resnick and Walker published by Willie. The demo videos were bought from a company in USA by my university for teaching. They have a lot. I'm sorry for not remembering its name to show my appreciation. It seems that they came from the University of California, Santa Barbara, where I got my PhD in physics. Thanks, God.